Hey there riders, Moto Geno Chris here this morning and I've got Yamaha's Tri-City 300 which I've been really interested to test out ever since they announced it last year at around Eichma. And the reason for that is because obviously you're getting this dual front wheel setup that we've seen on the Tri-City 155 and also on the Nikon. And each of these systems, they use the same principle, but they're designed specifically for each of the bikes or scooters that they're put on. So there's, a, there's some differences between these front wheel setups. Now, essentially speaking, the Tri-City 300 is an X-Max 300 with this very different front end setup. And what that does mean is that over an X-Max, you're getting the dual front wheel setup, different braking system. It's a significantly heavier scooter by having this front system on it. And it is a matter of kind of weighing up the benefits over the standard version, which is going to be cheaper. And certainly it's gonna have a bit more performance simply because even though there's the same engine in it, it just has a lot less weight to push. One of the interesting things, of course, is the fact that all the weight on this is on the front and so it carries it quite differently. I certainly wouldn't complain about the level of performance on offer here, but if you're really about the performance, you probably will find that the X-Max 300 being lighter is a little bit more zippy and certainly it takes off a little bit quicker, but this is no slouch by any means. So apart from having the two wheels themselves, you've got the sides of the wheels revealed, which is, you know, a, a cool feature. The forks are on the inside of the wheels and basically those disc brakes are between the wheels and the forks. So it does keep them tucked away. It's a pretty cool looking machine, I've got to say. It's got a lot of landscape here at the front as far as that nose. Great throw of light from the headlight, only basic indicators, and these are, kind of moving up towards that 12k range compared to the X-Max 300 which is only about the 8.7 range from memory just off the top of my head and those are Australian prices. I've got to be honest having the two wheels on the front just boosts the stability of this machine out of this world. It's really unbelievable and particularly if you're riding it on grass or on gravel or on kind of mixed conditions, you'll actually find that this thing is so, so easy to ride. Uh, we're on a motorcycle or a scooter, a traditional scooter. You'd need to be really careful. Now, for people who are worried about the weight of the vehicle, obviously these things are heavy, but the dual wheel setup means that you're not taking much of the weight. It's a very manageable machine. Probably the one downside I'd say with this scooter that I find as far as the rideability is actually just something that comes down to feel. So that suspension system and that front system actually kind of oscillates in this way. And as a motorcyclist with a single front wheel, you just don't get that kind of feeling and it's a very unusual feeling. So on a machine like this, if you jump on one and just go for a test ride, I'm gonna say it, it took me probably a good four hours worth of riding to really get used to it and for it to start feeling natural. It's still not 100% natural compared to a normal motorcycle, but it's getting a lot, lot closer. And so if you jump on one of these, uh, chances are it's gonna feel pretty unusual and you may not like it at first. And I think that's probably gonna work against it for people who've got a lot of riding experience because you may jump on one of these and just go, it just, it's not right. Uh, however, the more time I spent on the Tri-City 300, the better it got and the more I came to appreciate that different feel. And it's like on the Nikon, it's like on the Tri-City 155. They've got a very different feel to them and you've got to take that into account when it comes to riding them. But keep that in mind if you do test ride one, try and go for a bit of a longer test ride so you get a good feel for it and see what it's capable of because as I said, the stability on this is amazing and the X-Max 300 is a great platform. So let's have a talk about the general specifications of the Tri-City 300. Obviously, two front wheels, 14 inch front wheels, 14 inch rear wheel. You've got disc rotors on every wheel. Those are two 67 millimeter disc rotors. Uh, I think with two piston calipers on the front and it's quite a powerful braking system if I'm honest. However, of course, you are bringing a lot of weight up to a stop with that. The actual scooter itself weighs 250 kilos. So for comparison, the X-Max 300 is about 180. While you do have a lot of extra weight, the way it's taken through that front steering system does mean it's less perceptible when you're riding as far as 
a weighty machine. However, when you're coming to a stop, you will notice it because you've got a fairly hefty scooter and also scooters with the way they keep the weight low. Uh, they have a very different feel to a motorcycle in general and it does mean that if you're really hard on the brakes you feel that weight a little bit more. You've actually got dual forks on each of those front wheels and like on the Nikon and the Tri-City 155 it does mean that it's quite a solid and quite a resistant suspension system on the front so you don't get a lot of dive it can feel a little bit harsher than a traditional fork system only because you've got essentially just a much beefier system on the front end. That's not much of a criticism, but it is something you'll probably notice on a machine like this. Moving back on the scooter. As far as controls, very, very simple controls. Now, when I was talking about that dual front wheel setup, one of the really cool things they've done on the Tri-City is that they've allowed you to lock it. As it is here, it doesn't have a side stand down. It doesn't have a center stand down. This is the scooter just sitting upright on its own. The front suspension system is actually locked and there is a handbrake on because it will roll. And what basically that allows you to do is you can come to a stop and you can engage that front brake locking system. It's not the brakes on the wheels, it's actually a brake up in that steering mechanism, in that balancing mechanism. And that will basically stop the suspension from, you know, from sagging one way or the other. So you, you don't get that you don't get that really easy kind of uh, steering motion, which would otherwise let you lean the scooter into a corner or something like that. Uh, and this works really well. I probably wouldn't leave the scooter like this parked somewhere where there's gonna be lots of traffic where someone might bump it or knock it over because if you push it far enough over, it, it will fall. So a little bit less secure than a side stand, but there's a side stand and a center stand there for those kind of parking situations, but it offers a really, really cool feature. You can blip that throttle, and as soon as you blip the throttle, it'll release that front uh, lock, and it'll let you take off, because you do want to be able to kind of lean, lean the scooter as soon as you get moving. And Yamaha have obviously made it so that you can't leave the steering lock on and use it to keep the scooter upright, uh, because obviously that could be quite dangerous. Where you'd normally have a high beam flasher, you can actually hit that button and it'll turn it on and it'll turn it off. And there's actually a marker on that dash which will let you know when you can engage it. And then it's just a matter of hitting the button, the scooter will beep, it lets you know it's done and you can, you can really feel it. Uh, you do have traction control, you've got a simple LCD dash, you've got keyless ignition, which I really like on this scooter because it meant I could just jump on not much to worry about, really, really simple. Nice mirrors, very, very wide bars that give you a lot of leverage. It's quite interesting. It's still got a, a quite a strong reaction to counter steering, uh, but it's a super stable machine, as I've mentioned, and as I just keep mentioning, because it's, it's such a strong point on this scooter. It's got basically a very similar seat, maybe the same seat as the X-Max 300. Uh, towards the front of the seat, easy reach to the ground. Towards the rear of the seat, you've got a lot more room and a bit more comfort. Like the X-Max, it's not a really stretched out seating position. So let's have a quick look at the ergonomics. 795 millimeter seat height is not particularly low. However, being a scooter, they do tend to be very, very accessible. And as long as you're sitting right on the front of the seat, easy reach for both feet down to the ground for me at 180 centimeters, 32 inch inseam. Getting a foot up, as you can see, uh, that's fairly roomy without you know being enormously so. There's nothing holding this scooter up. It's simply me just sitting on it with that front steering locked. I do need to move right back in the seat to kind of get a bit more of a stretch out in that, that sportier seating position. And the benefit of that sporty seating position is that it moves, it moves your arms out so they're a lot straighter, where on the more traditional seating position, you're actually, your arms are a bit closer to you. Good wind protection, easy vision through the mirrors, uh, very, very nice and comfortable seat for a couple of hours at a time, no issues there. Uh, very little to complain about. Obviously you'll notice it's not a full step through scooter. You've actually got your fuel tank there and then you've got plenty of storage under the seat, which I'll show you. Uh, if you're a much, much shorter rider, I still don't think you're gonna have that much of an issue because obviously the front wheels keep the scooter upright and nice and stable. And as long as you can get one foot down reasonably well, it's gonna be a super easy machine to ride on a daily basis. 
Uh, as far as the keyless ignition, I've got the key in my pocket. Move it into the on position, hit that seat, and I've got access to the under seat storage, which will take a full face helmet at the back, a full face helmet at the front, and there's a bit of room in the middle for other stuff too. At the moment, I've got a GoPro, I've got gloves, I've got a liner in there, and there's heaps of room to spare. So a nice thing to see. Now talking about the general ride, this is a really interesting machine. As I said, it'll take you time to get used to this particular scooter. However, at the end of the day, it's a really fun thing to ride. Uh, it's nice and stable. It turns in easily. It's got, you know, real proper scooter-like handling. Uh, on the back of the scooter, it's got the shocks, as you can see here. Uh, well, they're kind of hidden away. Preload adjustable. And I will say where the X-Max 300 has a very plush suspension system on it, it's a bit harsher on the Tri-City 300. And as I did mention earlier, I think I put that down to that double fork system on each wheel on the front. It does tend to be a harsher, uh, it's just a suspension system which due to the amount of weight going through it and, and the design on all of these bikes has always felt like it's, it's just harsher. And looking at that suspension, it actually looks like it's using the vast majority of that 100 mils of travel. So it is doing its job, but over the kind of low speed bumps, it's harsh. Uh, on the rear as well, uh, harsher than the X-Max 300, but you've got the preload to play around with. And that's probably something I would do if I have the bike long term, depending on whether I've got just me on it or someone on the back as well. So what's my overall impression of the Tri-City 300? It's a really cool machine. It's not gonna be for everyone. As I mentioned, over the X-Max 300, it's heavier, obviously. As far as power, you've got just shy of 28 horsepower with a smooth throttle response and free flowing flywheel effect with the Tri-City 300 offering strong and responsive power that gets you ahead of cars quickly and up to speed effortlessly. The only time I really felt there was a disadvantage was on the steep freeway sections where cruising at 115 km per hour, the Tri-City couldn't accelerate where the X-Max would have had a little bit more in it, being simply a little bit lighter and having that better power to weight ratio. Handling, really, really good. As I said, that little bit of oscillation at the front, which is really basically something that these three wheelers do uh, when they've got a leaning system on the front, Bit of an unusual feel to it, but something that I think you'll get used to very, very quickly. It's got that locking system, so if you're someone who's worried about the weight of a scooter, maybe has back problems, uh, wants something really easy to handle, I'd definitely recommend checking this out. You're paying quite a premium for it. It is a heavier overall machine, but it's something that you'll only notice on the brakes and a little bit as far as the engine performance, because obviously that power to weight ratio has been changed. But it's still a great thing to ride. It's a fun thing. It's, you know, as I said, it's a premium offering. These aren't gonna just be, to me, something that a million people buy. I think the X-Max 300 will still be the more popular choice just because it offers a very similar package. However, it's lighter and cheaper. And at the end of the day, that's a winning combination. But for the right person, I think this would be a heap of fun. And as I said, if you want that stability uh, and you don't wanna worry about the balance as much, whether that's because you've got a back problem, you've injured yourself at some point in the past or anything like that, there can be lots of reasons for that. Uh, this will do the job and it'll be a great fun thing to ride. So if you've got any questions at all, let me know down below in the comments. I will do my best to answer them. As always, I really appreciate you watching the video. If you've liked it, sub, hit that notification bell. And as always, stay safe out there.